congratulations on your new handy quilter Amara ST. You will love stitching on the stationary quilting machine with 20 inches of brightly lit throat space. The seven inch color display has a touch screen to easily navigate and customize your machine settings. Adjust the lift table to your perfect height with the touch of a button. You can comfortably sit or stand while you move your quilt across the smooth, spacious surface. Take charge of your stitches with InSight technology in the lift table, which allows two settings of stitch regulation. Let me show you all of these features and more in the new Handy Quilter Amara ST. A standalone bobbin winder is also included with your Amara ST. For instructional information, follow the link in the description. An accessories box is also included with your Amara ST. In the box, you will find the thread mast and stand, power cord, bobbin case and screwdriver, bobbins, two packs of needles, a hex wrench, maintenance tools, an oiler, resource kit, thread samples, and a quick reference card. To turn on the lift table, you will need to plug it into a power source. We recommend using a surge protector. The lift table is adjustable with the touch of a button. It can raise up to approximately 48 inches and lower to approximately 24 inches. The lift table has four programmable height settings. To program a button, move the table to your preferred height. Then press the M button for memory and the number you wish to set. The lift table is equipped with a safeguard to prevent overheating. If the word hot appears on the screen, then the table needs to rest for a short amount of time, approximately 20 minutes. There are optional accessories for the lift table, including casters, a secret drawer, and table extensions. To turn on your Amara ST, first plug into power. We recommend a good surge protector. Then turn on the power switch at the back of the machine. Next, turn on the power at the front of the machine. The Amara ST has a seven inch color touchscreen. Navigate through the screen by making selections. You'll know when a selection is active because it is green. We're currently in manual mode. There are three preset manual mode settings, or you can adjust those settings manually. You can also select regulated stitching, in precision or cruise, adjust your needle speed, or your stitches per inch. This is the play button. Use this to stitch without using the foot pedal. This button allows you to lift or lower your needle. It also determines if the needle stops in the up or down position. This is your tension setting. This is your low bobbin estimator. This is your virtual hand wheel. Use this to raise or lower the needle from the screen. Let's talk about the Amara ST's lighting package. To access the lighting, you'll select the light bulb icon on the home screen. From there, you will notice there are two light options. Number one is for the throat space. Number two is for the needle. You can turn them off or on independently. You can also select the level of brightness that you would like and raise or dim as desired. Next, we'll go to the Tools tab. In the Tools tab, you'll find a stitch counter. You'll find Calculator, the option for Updates, and Diagnostic Tools. Next, we'll go to the Settings. In the Settings tab, you'll find where to set your low bobbin estimator, where to access your pinpoint laser light, where to change the alarms, and where to set the language. Next, we'll go into the Information tab. This shows information about your machine, along with helpful guides about needle and thread weight combinations, and information on how to thread your machine. 
let me show you the features of the Handy Quilter bobbin case. The M-Class bobbin case has a brake spring inside. There are several different types of brake spring. Yours may look different than this one. At the top of the bobbin case is an opening. On the exterior of the bobbin case, you'll see the tension spring and two screws. Don't touch the small screw. The large screw is the one that may need to be adjusted when tension adjustments are necessary. On the front of the bobbin case, you will see a latch. This is the latch we will use when we are removing the bobbin case from the machine. You'll want to make sure that you keep your bobbin case clean. On the interior, you can use a small brush or canned air. On the exterior, you'll want to keep the tension spring clean by using a small piece of paper that's folded over and just place that under that spring and remove any debris that may be in there. We're ready to insert our bobbin into the bobbin case. Hold your bobbin so your thread is coming off clockwise. You'll want to check and make sure that your thread is coming off, making a lowercase b. I remember b is for bobbin. Or the number 9. Lay that flat into your bobbin case and pop it down. Find the slit on the exterior of the bobbin case. Pull the thread around to that slit until it engages and you see the bobbin moving clockwise. Then you can pull the thread down underneath the tension spring. You'll feel a small click. Let's check the tension on the bobbin case. When you pull on the thread, the bobbin should stand up in your hand. If it comes off your hand at this point, your tension is too tight and needs to be loosened. If the bobbin is laying flat in your hand or at a slight angle and not standing up straight, it needs to be tightened. You'll make adjustments to the bobbin case at the large screw. Turn to the right to make it tighter. Turn the screw to the left to loosen it. Let me show you how to change the needle on the Amara ST. Always make sure that you're using System 134 needles and that you know what size needle you're using. I'm using a size 18 as indicated in the right corner of the package. Remember that the size of the needle you're using is always going to be based on the weight of the thread that you're using. For more information, please refer to your quick reference card. To change the needle, use your hex wrench to loosen the screw above the needle, I'm just going to turn it counterclockwise until the screw is a little loose. Your needle may fall at this point and that's okay. We just want the screw loose enough to be able to remove that old needle. Set that aside, pick up your new needle, make sure that that scarf cutout is facing the back so that the groove is running down the front. going to push upwards. I'm going to just hold that up firmly while I tighten down a little bit. I'm not tightening a lot here because I want to be able to double check that that needle is straight. I'm going to use my old needle, just run it down that groove to make sure the groove is straight, insert it into the eye, and I can check here for positioning on my new needle when I'm sure that it's perfectly straight. I'm going to use that needle, uh, old needle, with upward pressure while I finish tightening that screw down. The screw up here isn't super tight. I don't want to strip the screw just tight enough to hold that needle in place. There's helpful information on the screen of your Amara ST when you have questions about needles and thread weights. Go to the information tab and select the needle and thread weight chart. If you have trouble remembering how to thread your Amara ST, no worries. 
there is an online guide to help you with that. Go to the Information tab and select the machine and threading icon. You can even magnify the different steps. We're ready to thread our Amara ST. Place the cone of thread on the thread mast, then bring the thread over the top. Next, take the thread through the first guide on the body of the machine, then go back to front and loop the thread around the pretensioners. Always go around from the back side towards the front. Next, come down to the guide above the tension discs and then hold your thread like dental floss and get it really between the tension guides. You may even need to make sure you can get those tension discs open with your finger or fingernail. Then bring the loose end of the thread all the way around the tension disc and then come back over the top making sure you catch the check spring before you move under the stirrup. Next, we'll go up into the thread take up lever. And then bring the thread down to the last guide on the machine that kind of looks like a paper clip. We'll change direction now and we're going to thread from the front towards the back through the guide above the needle and then through the eye of the needle. Now that the machine is threaded, it's time to check and adjust tension. Remember, we already set the bobbin tension, so we're only working on the upper tension at this point. To check the tension, we'll pull down the thread from just below the last guide on the body of the machine. You want to feel resistance. If you don't feel resistance on the thread, please check in between the tension discs and make sure that the thread is flossed firmly between the discs. After checking, pull again, and if an adjustment is needed, you can increase the tension by turning the dial clockwise or to the right, or loosen it by turning it counterclockwise or to the left. On your home screen, you'll notice a number and the tension dial image. This indicates the unique number that works with the type of thread you have currently on your machine. This number is also unique to your machine, so it will not match another Amara ST. I'm ready to quilt. I was standing previously, but I've decided I'd like to sit while quilting, so I'm gonna make an adjustment to the lift table. I'm just going to push a button and lower it till it's a comfortable height for me. I also wanna point out that my Quilt sandwich is already pre-basted. You can choose whatever basting method you'd like. You can use pins or spray based or fusible batting or whatever method you'd like. I do want to make sure that my backing is larger than my quilt top because I want to make sure that my insight sensors are covered at all times while I'm quilting. So if I'm quilting all the way to the edge, my fabric needs to be larger there because I do want my sensors covered. To start stitching, first we want to bring up the bobbin thread. I'm going to use the needle up down button on the screen and I'm going to push it twice, once to put the needle down, bring it up again, and then I'm going to move my fabric and I can pull my upper thread underneath the foot and grab my bobbin thread at the same time. I'm going to move right back to where I took that first stitch and I can Use the foot pedal at this point to just lock in my stitches. Next, I want to start stitching. I'm currently in manual mode, so my stitches will not be regulated. 
I can choose to use the play button on the screen or the foot pedal. I'm going to use the foot pedal this time. So my stitches aren't regulated in manual mode, but I would like to regulate them, so I'm going to change modes. I'm going to select regulated and precision mode. That means the needle will only move up and down when I'm actually moving the fabric. I'm going to use the play button on the screen this time. The machine is on, but the needle's not moving up and down because I'm not moving the fabric. I really like the control I have with this mode. To turn it off, I can push the button on the screen or I can tap my foot pedal. Next, I'd like to use cruise mode. When I push play on the screen, the needle will immediately start moving, so I will need to move the fabric. Notice in cruise mode, my needle's moving even when I'm not moving the fabric. And I can push the pause button on the screen now. I want to make sure that I'm taking the time to check my tension before I get very far into my project. To check tension, I'm going to stitch little loops and little points, just making sure that my tension looks okay in those areas. Now when I flip over the back side of the fabric, I can check and make sure my tension's accurate. It'll show very quickly at points and loops if it needs an adjustment. We want to make sure that we're moving our fabric in a way that's going to allow our insight sensors to pick up the movement of the fabric for proper stitch regulation. To do this, I want to make sure that I am not twisting the fabric. I'm going to keep my fabric perpendicular to the edge of the table, and I'm going to move the fabric in a way that will allow the sensors to recognize the movement. When you're done stitching, to bring up your bobbin thread, make a locking stitch by pushing down on the pedal for a few stitch cycles. Then I'm going to pull down some slack in the upper thread and then move the fabric away until I have a few inches of thread underneath the foot. Bring it right back to where I took that last stitch and then I'm gonna needle up and down using the buttons on the screen. Move the machine away or the fabric away again and that brings up my bobbin thread right there. And now I can clip both my bobbin and upper thread off together. Some quilters find more success managing their fabric using one of our optional accessories like our machingers, the HQ paddles, or the HQ sweet spots. They really do make it a little easier to manage the fabric. When I'm done stitching, I want to bring up my bobbin thread, pull down some slack, move the fabric away, grab that thread, come right back to where I took the last stitch, needle up down, bring that away again, and I can grab my scissors off of my magnetic collar and clip off my bobbin and top threads together. The Amara ST comes with two feet, the closed toe foot and the open toe foot. If you decide you'd like to use the other foot, it's very easy to change. Let me show you how to do that. To put the new foot on, I'm going to slide that underneath and line up the groove in the top of the foot underneath the screw. If I need to, I, again, I can lift that hopping 
bar. And I'm going to put some upward pressure underneath the ankle of the foot while I use the hex wrench to tighten that foot down. Once that's tightened, I'm ready to stitch with the new foot. The Handy Quilter Amara ST comes standard with both the open toe and closed toe foot. However, there's optional feet available. Reach out to your Handy Quilter retailer to find out what other handy feet might be a good fit for your style of quilting. For additional resources, contact your local Handy Quilter retailer or visit handyquilter.com for instructional videos. Also make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more quilting content.